A team of paleontologists studying a Cretaceous crab fossil have made a remarkable find that this fossil has mineralized soft tissue, including the gills, preserved and fossilized. Welcome back to Paleopedia, and when it comes to the fossilization process, it is usually the hard tissues like bones and teeth that primarily become fossils. To break it down, essentially, for the most part, when it comes to fossils that we study, we are looking at fossils that used to be bone, and after they were deprived of oxygen, usually because they were buried in sediment, minerals replaced the bones and the teeth, and that is what we look at now. Because it is a mineralization of tissue, usually soft tissues do not become fossils. There are exceptions, and we do have very good fossils of soft tissue, like Microraptor and Boreopelta, which are so well preserved, we can even figure out the colors of these two dinosaurs. And obviously, to have fossilized bones, it's got to be a vertebrate animal. When it comes to invertebrates, usually we get kind of an outline or just the exoskeleton of like insects and crustaceans like crabs. But that's what makes this particular crab fossil very, very special because we do have soft tissue of it fossilized. So the crab itself is from the late Cretaceous period around 75 million years ago and it was uncovered in South Dakota. Now I know what you're thinking, Paleo, how in the world did a crab, a saltwater crab specifically, because that's what this is, ended up in South Dakota. There's no salt water there. And you are correct, but only for today. 75 million years ago, South Dakota was a lot further south on the North American continent, and it was underwater due to the Western Interior Seaway, which was an inland sea that literally split the North American continent into two different land masses. Over the last 75 million years, the North American continent has changed into what it looks like now, and South Dakota has been pushed further north, but that's where the crab fossil was. Now the fossil itself was uncovered between 2012 and 2018. We don't know the exact date that it was uncovered, but it didn't gain prominence until July of 2019 when Dr. Adil Klompmaker from the University of Alabama Museum looked at it and figured out how important it was. And Dr. Klompmaker very quickly was able to figure out just how important this fossil is because he did a review on another fossilized crab that had fossilized gills a few years earlier. And this new fossil is actually the fifth fossil of a crab that shows soft tissue. After Dr. Klompmaker made the discovery, Dr. Peter Clois of Whittier College and the University of California Museum of Paleontology put the fossil under a micro CT scanner. CT scans are used to look at the interior of cavities and spaces and is very useful for paleontology. And for a micro CT, you're looking at really minute details and the professors were hoping that they were going to be able to see more detail of the gills. Unfortunately, they weren't able to see any more of the gills. It looks like it's just part of the surface and Impression of the fossil, but they were able to get some other soft tissues that were fossilized, including the mandibles, food pipe, and stomach. Despite all of this, unfortunately, due to how crabs tend to fossilize, the team was not able to figure out the specific species of crab. They were able to identify the genus of the crab, which is belonging to the Secretinella genus, but Unfortunately, despite how well preserved the soft tissue is, they weren't able to figure out on a taxonomic level who, what it is. Another surprise came for the team when they were writing the paper. They found out that the fossil was preserved in limestone representing an ancient methane cold seep. This is when methane bubbles are seeping through the sea floor and where that spot is, it can support a lot of biodiversity, including crustaceans. This actually marks the first time a fossil has been found from a methane cold seep. So it's a really important find in that we now know that there can be fossils from this type of ecosystem. So overall, a very important discovery for paleontology, and hopefully we're able to use this to identify other fossils that were found in a similar environment.